I'm going to start here on Horro's website. We'll be moving around between different websites and also different software. But I'm going to start here and look at Horro's website. That's the address. And go ray tracing in English and go to tools and show you where you can find Wings 3D and also where you can find UV Mapper. Because so I'm going to be using UV Mapper Classic and I'm going to have used Wings 3D. Now, as an example, to start with, I'm going to use one of the example scenes provided in this product, just because everything's set up. So if I click this box, that's the scene I'm going to use. And I've just got it loaded here. And the reason I'm using this scene is that it's got a Wings 3D model here that I made, but I didn't provide a UV map for. And as a result, if we just have a look at the material here on this cube, I'll go into the material lab. I've used object cubic so that the picture texture here, which is a repeating pattern, is applied in the three cardinal directions to the surface of our object. So if I bring the object up here, imagine the image is projected down and across and across onto each of the six faces. Uh, this side and the opposing side all comprise one direction that its uh, object cubic is based on. So the implication of that is, with this shape, it, because the pattern is quite fine, you won't see the join along this edge where you've got one projected pattern meeting another. But if this pattern was coarser, then that might not work. So let's go to a position where we've got a coarser pattern. And I'm going to show you how to get one so that uh, you don't have to make it yourself. So I'll just shut that down there. We go to bryce5.com and go in there to the gallery and look under here for the material exchange. You'll find I've provided, along with other people, but I've provided here a material which has got a nice coarse pattern on it for us. If we click on that thumbnail there and then we find where the download button is there and that's just getting downloaded. It uh, won't take very long. I've already downloaded it once but I wanted to go through the process so you could get an idea about how long it's going to take and how to go about importing this material. So by default that goes into my downloads file. So if I go to my Bryce file here, go for material again, go into the material lab and then go import, it doesn't really matter where and find out if it's downloaded now, I think it will have. Open that, it's brought it in, select it, now look at the preview, not very helpful you see, and then look, and you can see now where the problem lies. This pattern doesn't look like anything like it did on the uh, thumbnail on the website there. The reason for that is we're missing a UV map. Where the Bryce primitives, they, when you get parametric mapping on the Bryce primitives, it automatically assumes some kind of mapping. But if you bring in a model from Wings 3D, for example, you don't have this advantage. So we need to provide a map for this shape, which is where UV mapper comes in. If we weren't going to do that, we could cheat and go object cubic, object cubic, object cubic for the texture components that are all scale to match and provide different uh, values for the various settings in the material lab. And now if I check out of this, you can see we've got a pattern but huh, by chance it does sort of work here which was the example I've given but there you can see there's a seam because that belongs to one direction that belongs to another this way and that way and then there's down and you can see there's a bit of a seam there so the pattern has been applied but because of the mapping and the image is not aligning at these points in, with the projection then you get these seams so we want to avoid those seams now I'm going to export this model but before I do that I'm going to make sure I set the material to default so I'm not trying to export any images because that can sometimes uh, break the exporter, it certainly slows it down and it sometimes grows with Bryce. So I'm just going to export it with the default grey material and so go File, Export Object and I'm going to use OBJ Format and just call it Test. So I'll save that object now and now I'll go to UV Mapper Classic, so I'll just launch this and I'll go File, Load Model and go Test, Open and that brings it in. It gives us a few statistics about the model and then it says there's an error open in the material library. Well, we're not going to worry about that 
and then it tells us the object has no UV texture coordinates. Right, fair enough. So go edit new UV map and we could do a spherical map for example. So Y axis would be a spherical map going through the middle, the top of the middle of that object. So we'll just go OK. There's a few settings to play with here but I'm just running through the basic steps then you can experiment with the other options yourself. So here we go. This is our UV map and this is the North Pole and that's the South Pole of our cube if you imagine that's the top and that's the bottom and these are the sides so apart from here and here where these join up and they don't quite meet the edge then it's probably going to be okay with the pattern on most of the object so we'll not get too fiddly and fussy about this we'll just save this model again go okay I'll just overwrite it say yes now instead of bringing the model into here which is it can cause Bryce to crash I mean and I want to avoid that so I'll just reload my scene it's probably better after you've exported an object not to try and reload it back into the same scene just in case there's an error so I'll just close that one where I exported it from get back to where I was and I'll take this object here and I'll delete it and then I go file import object locate my test object which is there okay okay that loads in drop it down onto the ground give it a quick render you can see it's in the default gray material and now I go into the material lab and load in my tile texture here which hopefully if we go actual selection we'll see it should be mapping onto this spherical map thanks to the guidance of the UV map so right you can see now we've lost the seams that were appearing in various places around there which it was okay just there wasn't it? it was here and here you can't see those but the frequency of the material looks rather low so the next thing then is to go into here and increase these values here so if I do like 5% in channel A because it's got B and C channels matched as well I need to try and get that same value in B and C and that should hopefully increase the frequency of the material Horo has a very good video on my channel and I'll try and provide a link in the title so you can search it out about using the uh, the tiling methods in Bryce but I'll just give you a quick guide there so you can see now we've managed to increase the frequency of the material um, I'm just looking around this model to see where the join is I think it should be on one of these sides where it, it probably will struggle to match it perfectly but uh, it doesn't look too bad considering it's not taken us very long to do this so like I say if you uh, if you find you want it a bit more denser then you can increase these values just make sure you, if you've got uh, several channels all working in alignment and then they're all got to be the same mapping mode then the scaling factor has to be the same otherwise it's, it's going to uh, break the material and you'll have it reflecting where it shouldn't and that kind of thing and opaque where it shouldn't be okay then that's the end of the video hope you found that interesting and that you'll have a go at experimenting with this software and using the results in your own renders